In this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to talk about using chemical formulas as conversion factors. In doing that, we'll be able to answer questions like how many atoms of hydrogen are in 250 grams of water? How can we do that? Well, if we look closer at our chemical formula for water in this case, right, we'll see that it tells us that there's two hydrogens and one oxygen for every one molecule of water. And so that allows us to go to use this as a conversion factor between number of molecules of water and number of atoms of hydrogen. For example, if I have two molecules of water, then I'm going to have four atoms of hydrogen because each of those molecules has two. So let me show you how we do that and how we'd write that as a conversion factor. So this question says how many moles of hydrogen are in two moles of methane or CH4? And so there what we're doing is we're going from moles of methane to moles of hydrogen. So I'm going to write down two moles CH4. And we want to multiply that by some conversion factor. And eventually what we're going to get out is moles of hydrogen. So how do we do that? Well, we know our conversion factor on the bottom needs to have methane, and on the top needs to have hydrogen. So we know we want to get rid of our CH4, and we want to get out hydrogen. And what we do is we go look at our chemical formula. And our chemical formula tells us a bunch of different conversion factors. And one of them that it tells us is that in one whole methane, we have four hydrogens. And so that means that I can write a four by my hydrogen, and a one by my methane. What we're basically doing here is saying every single time I have a mole of methane, I got four moles of hydrogen. And so all we're going to be doing is multiplying our two moles of methane by four. And that'll give me eight moles of hydrogen. And hopefully that makes sense, that if I have two moles of methane, two moles of CH4, then I'm going to have eight moles of hydrogen, four moles of those hydrogen for each mole of methane. So that's kind of a simple one-step process where you use a chemical formula as a conversion factor. And now we're going to use it in slightly more complicated cases where we're going to be calculating how many, say, atoms of hydrogen we have in water. So this is the problem that we originally posed. How many hydrogen atoms are in 250 grams of water? And I've broken down this conversion into three steps. And so in this first problem here, we're going to break it down into steps. And in the second problem, I'm just going to show the conversion factors that we might use, and we're going to think through which ones we should apply. Okay, so in this case, we see that step one is calculate the moles of H2O. And we're going to do that using molar mass. So over here in parentheses, the thing that's highlighted in yellow is the conversion factor we're going to use to accomplish that step. So we need to use the molar mass of water to go basically from grams to moles of water. And the molar mass of water, which you can calculate out as two times the molar mass of hydrogen, which we get from the periodic table, plus one times the molar mass of oxygen, which we get from the periodic table. And if we do that, we'll get 18.02 grams per mole. And so that's the molar mass of water, and that's what we're gonna use as our first conversion factor. So I'm gonna write down here, that we're starting with 250 grams of water. And I'm going to write out H2O because we're starting with grams of water and eventually we're going to want to get the hydrogen atoms. So before we might have just written grams. But now because we're going between, say, grams of water and atoms of hydrogen, it's really important that we start to write what different chemical species we're starting with. And we're starting with water. And we're going to use our conversion factor, which is our molar mass, to take that to moles. And we know that there's 18.02 grams in every mole of water. And our grams are going to go on the bottom to cancel out grams. So we put 18.02 on the bottom, and we put one mole up top. And that single conversion factor, what that's going to do is get us to moles, because we're going to get rid of grams, and we're going to be left with moles. All right, the next step says go ahead and calculate the moles of hydrogen by using the chemical formula. So how do we do that? That's just like the problem we did on the last step. We're going to go from water to hydrogen. And so here, we'll write down H2O on the bottom, because that's what we're getting rid of, and we're going to go 
to hydrogen. And we want to go to hydrogen. And in our water formula, we see that there's two hydrogens for every one whole water. So we put one by the water and two by the hydrogen. And what that's going to do is that's going to go ahead and cancel out H2O and leave us with H. So right now what we have is moles of hydrogen. And we can see that because our moles are left and our hydrogens left. And the last thing we want to do is we want to go from moles of hydrogen to atoms of hydrogen. And we use Avogadro's number to do that, just like you would expect. Avogadro's number takes us between a number of atoms and moles. And that's what we want to do in this process. So in this case, we're starting with moles. And we're going to atoms. And so that means that our moles needs to go on the bottom. And so we have one mole, and in one mole we know that we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules or things. And that's going to get rid of our moles, and the units of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd in this case are atoms. So what we're left with now is atoms of hydrogen. So we've set up all those conversion factors, and now all we're going to do is we're going to plug those into our calculator to calculate how many hydrogen atoms we have. And if we plug that in, we'll get 1.7 times 10 to the 25th hydrogen atoms. So let's connect this back to our question. We were asking how many hydrogen atoms were in 250 grams of water. So that's, that's uh, just a cup of water, basically. And we're actually calculating how many hydrogen atoms, that is, the atom with one proton and one electron around it, are in that cup of water. So always try to connect your calculations to the question you're asking and think about it in the context of the real world. We just actually figured out how many real hydrogen atoms are floating around in this cup of water if its mass was 250 grams. Okay, let's do one more example. In this case, I haven't summarized the steps. I've just listed the conversion factors we have. So we have three conversion factors at this point. You can go between moles and numbers using Avogadro's numbers, right? So if I have... Uh, one mole of atoms, how many individual atoms do I have? Well, that's where Avogadro's number comes in. I can go between moles and mass using molar mass. And I can go between the molecules and atoms in that molecule using the chemical formula. So the chemical formula allows me to go between the number of molecules I have and the number of atoms of a specific type I have. Or you can think of it as taking you between the number of moles of molecules you have and the number of moles of a particular atom. And it works in both cases. So... Our question asks, what mass of caffeine contains 2.7 times 10 to the 23rd nitrogen atoms? So the first thing I'd like to do is just come up with kind of a plan of how we're going to solve this problem. And we know that eventually we want to get to mass, and we want to get to mass of caffeine. And what we're given is nitrogen atoms. So we need here to decide what conversion factors we're going to use to accomplish our goal. Notice this is going the reverse direction that we did in the last problem. But really, that's no problem because these are just conversions, and we can switch what's on top of our conversion factor and what's on bottom of our conversion factor to go any direction we'd like. So since we start with atoms, that's what I'm going to write down, and I'm going to go from atoms, and the first thing I'm going to do is go from atoms to moles. And... The reason I'm going to do that is because I've given a number of atoms, and I know I can take the, atoms, the number of atoms to a number of moles using Avogadro's number. And then what I'm going to do in the next step is I'm going to go from moles of nitrogen. This is moles of nitrogen. I'm going to go from moles of nitrogen to moles of caffeine. So from moles of nitrogen, I'm going to go to moles of caffeine. All right, and I'm going to go from moles of nitrogen to moles of caffeine using the molecular formula. And then I'm going to finally go from moles of caffeine to the mass of caffeine. And I'm going to do that using molar mass because that's what takes us between moles and mass. So it's a nice first step if you have one of these more complicated conversion factors to first try to pick out what are going to be the individual steps you're going to do. And now we have kind of a game plan for what we want to do. And we know that the first thing we want to do is go from atoms to moles. And so I'm going to write down our starting quantity of atoms, 2.7 times 10 to the 23rd. And I'm just going to put N for nitrogen atoms. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to apply Avogadro's number to go to moles of nitrogen. And we know that in this case, since we're starting with atoms and we want to get out moles, then our mole is going to go up top and Avogadro's number is going to go on the bottom. And then what we were going to want to do, now that we're left with moles and we've canceled out our nitrogen atom, is we're going to use our chemical formula as a conversion factor to go between the moles of nitrogen and the moles of caffeine. And so we're getting rid of nitrogen, and so that should go on the bottom. And I'm just going to write CAF up top for caffeine rather than writing out the full chemical formula. And if I look at the chemical formula for caffeine, it's this big old messy guy up here. And it tells us that for every one molecule or one mole of caffeine, we have four atoms of nitrogen or four moles of nitrogen. In this case, we're dealing with moles. So I know I'm going to put one up top because for every one mole of caffeine, I have four moles of nitrogen. So those, are, those two conversion factors get me from the number of nitrogen atoms to the moles of caffeine. And now my last step is just going from moles of caffeine to mass of caffeine. And I'm going to do that using molar mass. Now luckily, we're given the molar mass of caffeine here because calculating it's kind of a pain. And so the, the molar mass of caffeine is 194.2 grams per mole. And we know that we have, if you look back in our units, we have this moles up top. So that tells us that we need our moles on the bottom. And so we're going to have one mole on the bottom. And we know that in every one mole of caffeine, there's 194.2 grams. All right, and now when I multiply that through, my moles are going to cancel out. And I'm going to be left with grams of caffeine because my nitrogen also canceled out. So I'm just left with caffeine and grams, which tells me that I have a grams of caffeine or a mass of caffeine, exactly what I was looking for. And when I multiply that through on my calculator, I'm gonna get out 22 grams. Go ahead and plug that into your calculator and make sure you get the same thing. It's really important that you put this Avogadro's number here in the first conversion factor in parentheses. If you don't put that in parentheses in your calculator, then you're gonna accidentally get something like 10 to the 40th. And remember, if you get something that's 10 to the 40th, it's almost always wrong. The correct answer here is 22 grams. So go ahead and plug that into your calculator and make sure you get the same thing. All right, thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry on using chemical formulas as conversion factors. Please let me know any questions you have below. And you can also visit my channel to see other chemistry videos.